Sarajevo's people have endured three years under siege from the Bosnian Serbs. Today, in the skies above their city, they saw signs of hope. NATO jets continued their systematic attack on Bosnian Serb positions throughout the day. It's the biggest combat mission in NATO's 45-year history. The action was triggered by Monday's mortar attack on Sarajevo's old town, when 37 people were killed by a Bosnian Serb missile. The NATO action began early this morning. The harsh light of fires and explosions colouring the night sky. Some people watched the bombardment from their houses, but after more than 10,000 deaths here in the last three years, most Sarajevans had given up any hope of outside intervention. Last night it came on a scale which could yet change the course of this war. U.S. planes from Italy and the Adriatic dominated the early attack, providing 48 out of the 60 planes in the first assault. Their action, though, was swiftly backed up by French and British forces on the ground. The NATO action in Bosnia came in three stages. Its aim to disable the Serbs' communication system and then to reimpose the heavy weapons exclusion zone around Sarajevo. First, at around 1 o'clock this morning UK time, NATO jets, led by US F-15s and F-16s, bombed Serbian anti-aircraft batteries and radar sites, including a key air defence complex on Mount Jahorina. Two hours later, a second wave of jets flew in, targeting a Serb ammunition factory at Vogostja and an arms dump at Lukovica barracks. Just over an hour later, French and British guns on Mount Igman opened up on 15 Serb tank and artillery positions around the city. More than 600 rounds were fired. Among the casualties, five European Union monitors killed south of Sarajevo during the night. It's not yet clear whether they were killed accidentally by NATO bombs or by ground fire from the Bosnian Serbs. The NATO operation also extended to Bosnia's other remaining safe areas. In Tuzla, Bosnian Serb air defences in the Majevica hills were hit. Earlier this year, a Serb artillery shell in Tuzla killed 71 people, the worst single massacre of the entire three-year war. Serb air defences around Garajda were also targeted, along with air systems near the western town of Mostar. The UN has delivered an ultimatum to the Bosnian Serb leadership. The force commander, General Janvier, informed the Bosnian Serb army commander, General Mladic, that the NATO unperformed operation will be ongoing until, in the opinion of, bo of both NATO and UN commanders, the threat to the civilian population of Sarajevo is removed. But not all Serb guns are out of action. Around the Bosnian Serb stronghold of Pali, NATO planes came under heavy fire. This exchange in response to another wave of NATO attacks this afternoon. In return, Serb gunners shot down a French Mirage jet. The pilot and navigator ejected their two parachutes visible to the left of the smoke trail as Serbs cheered on the ground. The fate of the two crewmen is not yet known. Serb officials say at least seven people have been killed during the air raids but they remain quiet on the exact extent of the damage inflicted by NATO's jets. Latest reports suggest that daytime raids have targeted an army Hello. barracks in Pali and an ammunition dump at Hadzitsi. The only other Bosnian Serb response has been a brutally familiar one. Several mortars landed in Sarajevo's old town this morning. UN bases in the capital are also braced for reprisals. The Bosnian Serb leader on his way to Belgrade seemed determined to resist the NATO attack. We are, we are shooting down the aircraft and we will have to shoot down the aircraft to defend ourselves. What about the rest of the peace process that some people try to revive? 
Well, uh, it's uh, quite difficult to destroy uh, some people and to talk to these people. Uh, I think they, uh, those bombs uh, can destroy the peace process too. On the streets of Sarajevo's old town, scene of Monday's massacre, there was quiet relief. From the Bosnian government too, praise for the NATO action and an apparent new wish to talk peace. I think it's a, a very important step towards peace because it restores the credibility of the international community. And I hope that uh, the Serbs, the Serb terrorists and the regime in Belgrade uh, get a good message from this. As the NATO action continued this evening, more details came out of the terms put to the Bosnian Serbs. The force commander has demanded that General Mladic of the Bosnian Serbs withdraw all his heavy weapons from the 20 kilometer exclusion zone around Sarajevo, accept a cessation of hostilities, and desist from all threats of attack against any of the remaining United Nations proclaimed safe areas. Acceptance of this demand by the Bosnian Serbs will be the first step towards a negotiated and durable settlement. For the moment, though, the Serbs do not want to negotiate. Extensive damage from NATO planes seems to have hardened their resolve, a point which General Radko Mladic will confirm in a TV broadcast in the next half hour. The UN and NATO know they are pursuing a risky strategy. They have made a historic and irreversible move from peacekeeping to peace enforcement on an unprecedented scale. It is a defining moment not just for Bosnia, but for the UN's future